Today, every day, small cap investors visit Agoracom knowing this is the day to discover the world's next great company, to have their dreams come true. That's why I take to the open road, to find them, to tell their stories, to engage them, to bring them to life. Because they want to connect with you from your office, your phone, your home, anywhere. Agoracom, find your dream. Welcome to Beyond the Press Release, a production of Gorecom, in which we take the time to interview small cap CEOs and executives about recent important news with their companies. And we've got a big one today with us is Marshall Gunter, CEO of Data Metrics AI, trades on the TSX Venture Exchange on the stock symbol DM. And for our friends in Europe on Frankfurt under D4G, and for our friends in the US under DTMXF. For those of you who are new to the story, let me give you a quick summary. Uh, Data Metrics is an artificial intelligence company that's focused on social media discovery and fake news detection. That's generalizing it. But more than just lip service, because you're probably wondering, well, how, how lucrative could that be? Their clients include the Canadian government, the United States Air Force, and even Latte, a $2.6 billion South Korean uh, multinational conglomerate. They recently reported record quarter revenue of $1.6 million for Q3. Uh, and just last week, they announced that they become an affiliate member of the Carnegie Mellon University Center for Informed Democracy and Social Cybersecurity. But the big news that we're talking about today, here's a headline, Data Metrics, working with U.S. government agencies on COVID-19 and coronavirus, fake news and dissemination. Marshall, welcome to the show. Hi, George. Glad to be here. Hey, glad to have you back because I think it was only about ten, you know, only a couple of weeks ago when you had when we had you on list uh, when we had you on li last time. Uh, yeah, this is this is pretty big news. It warranted a halt uh, by IROC because of how big it was. So let me ask this question: uh, You know, this this new U.S. contract. What's the nature of the work uh, that you're engaged in surrounding COVID and, and coronavirus? Oh, so right now we're engaged in tracking, um, finding foreign influence inside the COVID-19 narratives that are going on online. Specifically, uh, we're targeting Chinese, but additionally, we have been uh, following Russian and I Iranian influences. So, Marshall, specifically, what are the concerns of the U.S. government with respect to these narratives uh, that are being deployed by foreign entities? What, what are they concerned with? What are you looking for? Well, the major concern of the the agencies in the U.S. is China exercising, you know, uh, disproportionate influence inside the narratives um, that are going on regarding COVID-19. And there are a lot of sub themes that are, are out there. Like, there are some sub themes about this being a bioweapon and whether or not it was you know, where its origins are, whether those are U.S. or China or even Russia. Um, you know, when did the when did the narratives start to shift? You know, regarding the origins of COVID nineteen. You know, right. how did that happen? And you know, are they becoming significant enough to you know warrant a threat? Um, you know, how are foreign powers, specifically the Chinese, using all the accusations uh, of racism surrounding the COVID nineteen? Um, coronavirus and are they using those to you know further agendas or to you know further divide people um, is, is there concern there also that it might be used to uh, I guess uh, impact potential future you know the the, the American election coming up because we know oh. that we know that the administration is trying to uh, is trying to tie, you know, trying to name this as a it's a Chinese virus uh, yep. versus, uh, versus other people. So is that part of it as well? Yeah, absolutely. No, that specifically is part of it. In fact, that phrase Chinese virus is referenced in the report, which will be available on, um, uh, April 1st. Uh, okay. This report, are you able to discuss, uh, conclusions that were, were that were drawn from the report? Uh, sure. Absolutely. Um, so at Nexology, we examined, you know, millions and millions of social media documents uh, coming from the last few months that were tracking Chinese involvement in the online debate surrounding the Corona-19 uh, 
19 coronavirus, COVID-19 coronavirus, sorry. Right. Nexology found significant attempts by both Chinese authorities and Chinese news agencies to manipulate the media and shift the blame for the COVID-19 outbreak from China to the United States. Were you all, were you also able to find that that was a, a, an effective campaign? Uh, were you yep. able to measure, is, are you able to measure that as well as to, you know, uh, if that message actually got through to a certain percentage of the population that actually believed that narrative? Yes, we are able to measure that. And, and to date, um, it hasn't really taken root. Um, it spread fairly quickly within the Chinese communities that are involved in this, but it hasn't been picked up by any major Western populations. I mean, they're there. There's a few pockets here and there in the English, say, Twitter discussions and other things like that where this is being uh, picked up and regurgitated, but nothing of uh, significant volume yet. This report you're saying is going to be available on April 1st. Uh, am I right to assume that this is going to be an internal report that's just for the government agencies, or is there any chance that the public's going to get a chance to see those, uh, the report and its conclusion as well? No, the public will definitely get to see a version of the report. Wow. Oh, a version. So I guess there'll be some redaction, things like that. But you know, they'll, they'll will be. Will you be? Will you be publishing that all, or somehow make that available through data metrics, or putting on your website, or is that something we just have to go look for? No, we will make it publicly available at datametrics.com, um, and we'll probably put a press release out uh, with a link in it, so you can just look for that, and, uh, and you'll be able to download and read the publicly available version of the report, which I might add is going to be significant. This one is, uh, it's, it's pretty well done. Um, and you know, the people that are looking at this information and stuff do want to get it to the public uh, because this is a time of crisis and they want people to be informed. Um, let's talk about the business side of this. Uh, the, I mean, first of all, your, the operation side, that's amazing. Here's what I'm thinking. COVID, coronavirus, even, you know, the Chinese, the, the narratives coming out of foreign entities, especially out of China. This is all pretty recent. And up until now, you know, data metrics, a lot of its work has been around events that people knew were, were coming well in advance, you know, the Canadian elections. So when you, when you, when you won work, when, when you won jobs, you know, everyone knew that Canadian elections were going to be in October of 2019. I'm assuming the same goes for U.S. elections coming up in November of 2020. But Corona and COVID-19, you know, COVID-19 is pretty recent. So am I right to assume that that was a pretty fast turnaround getting data metrics on board? And in fact, that's a really good sign for the company that something this urgent that came on this quick, you know, essentially your phone rang. Uh, this is the second stage of that. In December, we presented our product. We passed that stage. The next stage is a pilot project, which generally takes about six months to get off the ground. Right. Uh, they immediately called us and said, we want to do the pilot. We want to do it now. Can you get started yesterday? And here's the criteria. Uh, so they were in a bit of a crisis. Um, and generally, you're correct. When we've applied the narrative shaping technology and the you know disinformation technology, it has been to known events that we could start tracking, you know, months ahead of time, right. watching how this narrative forms, watch how the fake news propagates, et cetera. Uh, but this does bring both our, you know, business capabilities and our technical capabilities full circle. So one of the things that we additionally do is we do crisis management. This goes way back to say 2017, 2018 with uh, operations with NATO and like Trident Juncture, uh, we do have software that takes, you know, hundreds of thousands of documents and breaks them down into summaries um, for analysts, you know, pulls out all the relevant entities, meaning like all the relevant people, all the relevant places, you know, the themes that, like I said, the, the artificial intelligence then condenses this into a, you know, a five line summary of what's going on. So we have crisis management software and we were able to, you know, effectively take our fake news stuff and use, in addition, use the crisis management software to get on this in a timely fashion. Um, 
these reports. But, but that says a lot about you guys as a company too. The fact that um, you're able to move so quickly, but I'm still impressed with the fact that you had, and by the way, I'm going to ask you, but I'm assuming you can't say it, but you had a U.S. government agency, and if you can name them, name them, or agencies if you can't. I still think what's impressive is they needed someone's help, and they picked up the phone and called and called you. Uh, what does that say about Data Metrics as a company and how it's you know how it's viewed by government agencies around the world? Well, I think that this uh, solidifies us as you know a front runner in this space. And I don't think, and unfortunately, I'm not at liberty yet to discuss the clientele uh, in the U.S. surrounding this subject, but they would not have called us unless that they thought that we were up to the job. Clearly. Yeah, no, that's a clear inference. And I, as a yeah. shareholder of the company, you know, I, I love hearing things like that because, you know, a lot of, a lot of people claim to have great technology and great things, but at the end of the day, it comes down to who else thinks that and is willing to pay for it. Um, let me ask you, Marshall, what does this do? What's the importance of this to your U.S. expansion plans? Because in a couple of previous interviews, you've talked about the fact that, you know, you have to, uh, you know, go through the channels and go through the steps and, you, and you're pretty successful, but there's still a process in order to get, you know, into what you called the previous interview, the alphabet agencies. Um, does this somehow fast track that or does it make it easier to get through that process? So eventually, you know, you, you have a much bigger customer base in terms of all the agencies. What, what does this do for you? Well, this is a uh, push forward our agenda by at least three months. Um, we were not expecting to run this pilot project. You know, like I said, till probably middle to end of the summer it's already done um, so this puts us into the next stage of the pipeline uh, which involves um, technology tech, um, scrutiny of our tech uh, you know make sure there's no security flaws that type of thing so we've already moved up forward into uh, stage three or we will be shortly um, and again just on not just in the public sector though so you know there's there's hurdles to pass but you know as we move forward into the private sector this validates our capabilities uh, for the u.s market i mean it's, in my mind this is com almost complete validation that you know we didn't go to them they came to us yeah you know they've even asked us to publish this report as far and wide as they as as we can and which means that not only did they think we could do the work, but when they got the work, they were satisfied enough with it that they wanted us to trumpet it far and wide. So I, I am taking that as you know validation of our company and our work. And this provides, you know, more potential for us to start penetrating the U.S. market in a much greater capacity. Last question for you. Um, you recently announced uh, just some, uh, some house cleaning. You recently announced the departure of uh, Data Metrics' President Jeff Stevens, uh, effective April 1. Some shareholders online have been asking about that. Uh, typically when I see these things, it's, you know, it's just uh, a changing of the guard, but maybe you wanna speak to that as to uh, why this change is being made uh, and now? Sure. So Jeff is actually a co-founder of the company. He's a co-founder along with Andrew Yu. Um, and when they founded Data Metrics many years ago, they founded it as a holding company. Um, and that was not quite so successful. So there's been quite a few write downs with that. And since I've taken over, you know, we refocused on to moving, instead of being a holding company, to doubling down on the capabilities of one company that Data Metrics owns, which is Nexology. I come from Nexology. I was both their chief uh, technical officer and their uh, chief executive officer at different times and at this stage it makes more sense we've given jeff and his capabilities to pursue another opportunity at another venture that's doing something more along the lines of its skill set which is you know building those holding companies and things of like that um Je jeff is here as part of the team in an unpaid right. advisory capacity in fact i was just talking to him this morning so this is a, a friendly departure there's nothing animus about it um 
and as a founder, you know, he is motivated to help us. And, you know, we look forward to continuing to have his support. Well, when you, when you say that, in fact, then, it's usually typically a very good sign when a founder moves out of the way for a, uh, a CEO that is uh, more focused on the specific uh, you know, on the specific business of the company now. So it, that's, that's actually what most founders want to do. They don't want to be there the whole time. What they want to do is build it to a point that there's a, there's a successful business line. And clearly with the clients you guys have gathered, uh, you know, federal government, U.S. Air Force, Latte, you know, revenue, record revenue in Q3, I, it, I think it's only a natural progression now to put you at the helm and uh, and and keep steering the ship right down this uh, right down this path. So I take it actually as a, a positive progression, positive next steps. Yeah, absolutely. And we all agree that this is a, a great way forward for everyone involved, including our shareholders. Marshall, congratulations on uh, on this achievement. Um, this is uh, even though the uh, the contract size of this because it's almost like a test, like you're saying was was not as you know significant material the nature of the work is the nature of the conclusions the report and the fact that this report can be made public uh speaks volumes about the company's capabilities and the trust not only in your capabilities but also in the conclusion so uh congratulations on this and look forward to having you back uh as soon as we can oh absolutely thank you george for having me Hey, and on uh, behalf of everyone at home, uh, stay safe. And, uh, you know, uh, it's ironic that we're actually talking about your work related to, you know, COVID-19, the coronavirus. Uh, so for everyone at home, make sure you continue to stay safe. We'll get out of this soon enough if everyone just does their part. And as you can see, uh, even Marshall and I are doing this via, via audio here because uh, it's important to get the information out. But at the same time, you know, uh, everyone's in different locations, which makes video sometimes a little more challenging. But, uh, you know, we're doing our part. We want everyone at home to do their part as well. So thanks to everyone for joining us. You've been listening to Marshall Gunter, CEO of Data Metrics, trades on the TSX Venture Exchange on the stock symbol of DM. Go do your due diligence. Uh, get to Agoracom. Get to the company's hub. Start taking a look at all the information we've got for you there. Make sure you get to the company site. Uh, to do your due diligence. Look for that report. That's going to be out April 1st on the company's website. I know we're going to be all over that. Hopefully you will be too. Uh, not just for its specific research and findings, but also just to show and demonstrate uh, the level of importance that uh, the company's artificial intelligence has to U.S. government agencies when it comes to uh, social media discovery and, and fake news detection. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Have a fantastic day. And we'll see you next time.